In this lesson, we will focus on solving systems of linear equations using the substitution method. We will go through several examples, and towards the end, we will examine two special cases, one where the system of equations has infinitely many solutions, and another where it has no solution. The first step in solving a system of equations using the substitution method is to isolate either the x or y variable in one of the equations. We can choose either equation, but we will try to make a choice that keeps the work easy. In this example, the coefficient of the x variable in the first equation is 1, making it easier to isolate x in the first equation. So, let's go ahead and do that. Add 3y to both sides of the equation. These cancel out, and you get x equals negative 9 plus 3y. Now that we have x by itself, the next step is to substitute this expression into the second equation for x. That is why it is called the substitution method. As you can see, we now have an equation with just one variable and we know how to solve this, right? First, let's distribute the 2. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. 2 multiplied by 3y equals 6y. Then, combine like terms. 6y plus 7y equals 13y. Then, add 18 to both sides of the equation. On the left side, the 18s cancel each other out, leaving us with 13y. On the right side, 8 plus 18 is 26. Now, to isolate y, divide both sides by 13, and you get y equals 2. Now that we have the value of y, the next step is to find the value of x by plugging in 2 for y in this equation, which is basically the first equation solved for x. 3 times 2 is 6, and negative 9 plus 6 is equal to negative 3. Finally, write your solution as an ordered pair, negative 3 comma 2, with x equal to negative 3 and y equal to 2. If you were to plot the graphs of these two equations, the lines would intersect at a point negative 3 comma 2. We can check that the ordered pair is a solution to the system by substituting it into both original equations. Substitute negative 3 for x and 2 for y. In the first equation, 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. In the second equation, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and 7 times 2 is 14. Negative 6 plus 14 is 8. As you can see, both equations are satisfied confirming that the ordered pair negative 3, 2 is indeed the solution to the system of equations. Now, let's try the second example, where the second equation is already solved for y. Since y is already isolated in the second equation, we just need to substitute this expression for y into the first equation. Now let's solve this equation for x. First, distribute the 2. 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. 2 times 1 is 2. Then, combine like terms. 11x minus 8x equals 3x. Now subtract 2 from each side of the equation. Cancel these out. 14 minus 2 is 12. Now, divide both sides by 3 to isolate x. And you get x equals 4. Now that you have the value of x, the next step is to calculate the value of y. You can do that by plugging in 4 for x in the second equation. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 plus 1 is negative 15. Therefore, the solution to this system of equations as a coordinate pair is 4 comma negative 15, with x equals 4 and y equals negative 15. In the next example, both equations are solved for y. Please feel free to pause the video and give it a try. Because both equations are already solved for y, you can substitute one into the other. You can substitute this expression for y in the second equation or this expression for y in the first equation. It doesn't matter, you will get the same result in both cases. Let's substitute 2x plus 8 for y in the second equation. Now, to solve this equation, start by clearing the fraction. To do that, multiply both sides of the equation by 5. Then Distribute the 5 on the left side of the equation. 5 multiplied by 2x equals 10x. And 5 times 8 is 40. Then distribute the 5 on the right side of the equation. 
5 times 3 over 5x equals 3x, right? And 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. Now, to get the variable on one side and the constant on the other side of the equation, subtract 3x from both sides and at the same time, subtract 40 from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, these cancel out and 10x minus 3x is 7x. On the right-hand side, cancel these out and negative 30 minus 40 is equal to negative 70. Now to isolate x, divide both sides by 7. And you get x equals negative 10. Next, plug in this value of x into the first equation to find the value of y. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. Negative 20 plus 8 is equal to negative 12. Therefore, the solution to this example is negative 12 comma negative 10. The next example is a bit challenging. In both equations, neither variable is isolated and neither coefficient is equal to 1. In systems of equations like these, the elimination method is often the most straightforward approach for solving them. However, sometimes you may be given a problem like this and asked to use the substitution method. We will follow the same steps as in the previous examples. The first step is to isolate either x or y in one of the equations. Let's isolate x in the first equation. I will explain shortly why I chose the first equation and decided to isolate x. First, add 8y to both sides of the equation. These cancel out and you get 6x equals 5 plus 8y. Now divide both sides by 6. So you have x equals 5 plus 8y over 6. Now that we have x by itself in the first equation, the next step is to substitute this expression for x into the second equation. On the left side of the equation, simplify by dividing both 12 and 6 by 6, resulting in 2. This simplifies the equation to 2 times 5 plus 8y plus 10y equals 23. Notice that there are no fractions in this equation. Initially, I observed that isolating x in the first equation would introduce a fraction with 6 in the denominator of the expression. However, I notice that when substituting this expression for x into the second equation, we can eliminate the fraction because 12 is divisible by 6, making the expression simpler to work with. That's why I chose the first equation and decided to isolate x. If we had chosen to isolate y in the first equation, we would still have fractions at this step. This is because isolating y results in an 8 in the denominator of the expression, and when we substitute it for y in the second equation, we cannot eliminate the fraction as 10 is not divisible by 8. This would complicate the calculations and require additional steps. The same applies if we had chosen the second equation and isolated either x or y. We would still have fractions, making the calculations more challenging. So, whenever possible, pick an equation and a variable that make the work easier. Having said this, now let's go ahead and distribute the 2. 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 times 8y is 16y. Then, combine like terms. Adding this, we get 26y, right? Now, subtract 10 from each side of the equation. Cancel these. 23 minus 10 is 13. To isolate y, divide both sides by 26. You can simplify 13 over 26 to 1 half. So y is equal to 1 half. Next, find the value of x by plugging in 1 half for y in this equation. 8 times 1 half is 4. And 5 plus 4 is 9. If we divide both 9 and 6 by 3, we can simplify it to 3 halves. Therefore, the solution to this system of equations is 3 halves comma 1 half. The examples we have solved so far have exactly one solution. In the next two examples, we will see two special cases where the system of equations has infinitely many solutions and no solution. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Since the coefficient of the x variable in the second equation is negative 1, it is easier to solve for x in the second equation. So, let's do that. First, subtract 9y from each side of the equation. Cancel these, and you get negative x equals negative 10 minus 9y. Now, to get rid of the negative sign in front of x, multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. On the left side, 
negative 1 times negative x is positive x. On the right side, distribute negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 10 is positive 10. Negative 1 times negative 9y is positive 9y. Next, substitute this expression for x into the first equation. Now, distribute negative 2. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. Negative 2 times 9y equals negative 18y. Then, combine like terms. This adds up to 0. So we have negative 20 equals negative 20, which is indeed true. This indicates that the system of equations has infinitely many solutions, which means there are an infinite number of ordered pairs that satisfy both equations simultaneously. If you were to plot the graphs of these two equations, the lines would coincide perfectly, indicating that any point on the lines satisfies both equations. So when you solve a system of equations and end up with a number equal to itself, as in this example, the answer is infinitely many solutions. Finally, let's consider the case where the system of equations has no solution. As you can see, the first equation is already solved for y, so you can substitute this expression directly into the second equation for y. Now, to solve this equation, start by distributing negative 10. Negative 10 times 1 over 2x equals negative 5x. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. Then, combine like terms. Subtracting this, give us 0, so we have negative 30 equals 14, which is false. This indicates that the system of equations has no solution. It means that there is no ordered pair that satisfies both equations simultaneously. If you plot the graphs of these two equations, you will notice that the lines do not intersect. They are parallel lines. So when you solve a system of equations and end up with numbers that are not equal to each other, as in this example, the answer is no solution. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe.